Welcome to Python Labs. In this video, I'm going to cover how to handle outliers in Python using Visual Studio Code. As a prerequisite, please make sure that uh, you have watched my previous video on uh, pre-processing or what we call as data engineering. Uh, you have applied some basic steps of uh, how to clean and pre-process the data. So at least I recommend you to finish the first uh, step one to 10 before you start handling the outliers. So let me begin explaining to you what is an outlayer. An outlayer is nothing but these are extreme values which are significantly different from the median or the majority of the cases. So these are extreme values which are basically that needs to be handled with care. Now do we really need to handle the outlayers? Yes or no? It depends upon um, your domain expert because sometimes outliers might be valid outliers. So you need to uh, carefully handle this. That's why I have mentioned here that it is a manual as well as automated approach. So in our case, for this particular video, I will assume that these are extreme values. And I will also show you um, uh, that these are in fact, with a real example, I will show you how to clean the data as well. So that we don't have any experimental errors uh, as part of data science and analytics. Now, how to handle the outliers? That's the question here. Now we know that outliers are extreme values and there are a number of ways you can handle outliers. But in this particular video, I'm going to explain to you one of the most popular technique called box plot, also known as a box and whisker plot. So what this box, box plot technique is, it basically lays all the values or which are distributed into five point scale. You see here, so basically uh, the, the middle is the basically the median value from the median to the left, 25% of the values which we are we call as Q1 or lower quartile on to the right side 75% of the values which is Q3 so basically what it means is we have the values 25% here 25% here and now we have basically on to the left there is also lower than Q1 which is called min or Q1 the way we calculate min or the lowest value that we can consider as part of our experiments is called um, what do you call a uh, min or what you call minimum value uh, the way you calculate that one is you need the iqr what is iqr iqr is basically interquartile range it's simply nothing but it's just q3 minus q1 value so that will give you a number and that value basically you need that in order to calculate the minimum value to consider as part of our uh, experiments so min is basically q1 minus 1.5 times iqr and the max is basically whatever you have at q3 that value plus 1.5 times iqr so what it means is 25 percent of the values are here and 25 percent from q1 to median and 25 percent of the values distributed between median to q3 and the remaining 25% of the values distributed from Q3 to the max. So any value outside of these min and max, we consider them as outliers. I hope that is clear now with the basic background of what is an outlier. So let's jump into the uh, code. So the step one is basically I need to import the needed libraries. I need NumPy, Pandas and Seaborn in this particular case. So I will run that code. So step one is done. Step two, I read the results, the CSV file data from the frame. So basically in this particular case, please note that I have already uh, done some uh, pre-processing technique in my previous video. I'm just simply importing the data here. So please, I encourage you to apply some data engineering or pre-processing uh, methods that I have explained to you in my, pre -pro in my previous video before you start actually handling the outliers. So I'm going to run, so uh, which is basically pd.readcsv. So here in the in the basically like you know um, what do you call the pandas library there's a read csv i'm just going to read the values and the step three is basically uh, view the general statistical analysis of the data so here step three i'm just going to run it's a very good idea to just have an overview of uh, how the data is uh, you know the basic stats of each of the features for example here the data frame dot describe that will give me all the stats now in this particular case you may see that for the sex or the gender uh, we have the min max everything is between 0 to 1 because it's only male and female that's why we have not much uh, distribution of the values here but if you look at the age for example we have the minimum 8 years child and the maximum is 77 years of uh, a senior citizen which really makes sense 
now for the weight if you notice carefully that the minimum uh, is basically 29 kilos which is fair but the maximum value 639 kilos that really is odd a person's weight in kilos 639 which means this particular weight needs to be this feature needs to be uh, further investigated and that's where the box plot or the outlier analysis comes into play again i'm repeating outliers is not that something you would do completely automated you have to do both manual as well as automated so as i shown you as i have shown you here the weight has something like strange value here so we need further investigation so also the you know it's a good idea to see the data how the data is spread in in terms of uh, numbers like for example here there's an option called data frame dot head that can give you the top end records of the data frame or you can also use data frame dot tail to get the lost end rows or even the data types you can find out with the df dot info so these are basic things that i have already covered in my previous videos so i can see that the weight is pretty much in uh, kilos but there is some odd values coming you know, stored in that one so also so that's basically step number four that i have covered so the step number five that i have done here is again this is part of cleaning uh, i have converted some lengthy names into shorthand notation for example hospital readmission i just have written as readmission and so on so these are quite few things that for example type of operation t operation and so on and also i have uh, converted all the columns to the lower case just to make life easy in terms of you know when you are doing the um, uh, other steps uh, to have everything in the lower case plus shorthand notations and this is really useful especially if you are trying to uh, draw some uh, you know do some visualization and uh, you, you, i will explain to you what i mean in the in a minute and then verify that all the columns with the new names are all there for example i'm just going to run this code which is renaming the columns I'm basically verifying all the new names they are pretty much looking good and then I'm basically doing the describe again so I'm still um, please note that in this particular video I'll be paying attention only on the weight column because this particular one definitely has some strange value 639 kilos and that's where I'm, I'll be focusing on how to clean and how to handle the outlier so step number five is done so step number six is Without doing anything, I'm not going to apply any techniques or anything. I'm just going to draw a box plot with um, basically like, you know, um, it's very simple. And now I have here in my beautiful, uh, what do you call the Seaborn um, SNS. I have a, a pretty much uh, one line of code SNS dot box plot. Now that I need to specify what is my X value, which is the X and what is my Y. And what is the hue? Hue is basically which values you want to fill inside. Now, in this particular case, uh, my target class, my target feature, or the dependent variable is complicated. So that's why I want to know whether the patients who are having serious complications or the patients who do not have serious complications. So I'm comparing between them and the weight of the person, the patients. The weight of the patient, as you can see, that there is definitely some outliers there. So there's some extreme outliers here, as you can see here. So the easiest way you can draw that is sns.boxplot, specify the x, specify the y, and specify the hue, the values that you want to fill in. So that's basically what uh, drawing a box plot for weight uh, feature. Now, as I shown you again, uh, the, this is uh, with that observation, you can definitely see that there is some strange values. We have seen before in numbers. Now we can definitely even see the same numbers through visualization as well. So, how do you handle outliers? This is a question. It's a million dollar question. Actually, there are a number of ways, again, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, you know, try to handle outliers. Uh, the easiest one is just delete the records which are having outlier values. Or the other technique is basically, uh, you know, replace the outlier value with mean or the median or some constant values or in fact, delete that cell value itself and so on. But these are very generic, uh, uh, you know, options. Again, these are very uh, applicable. These are actually applicable if you have lot of records. But as you know that when you are dealing with uh, some kind of hospital data that I am currently dealing here, we have limited number of records. We have got 400 and odd, 400 plus uh, patient records, and every record is very critical. 
and these are real data coming from the hospitals so basically which means that we do not have the luxury to delete those records so what we will do is we will try to up, uh, apply one of the best uh, approaches which is called flooring and capping technique flooring and capping technique now i'll explain to you what is flooring and capping technique basically flooring and capping technique has this is what or this is what it means you see here any value beyond less than the minimum border line that we have considered that any value beyond this we classify as outlier we just replace all those values with the minimum value that we have it's called flooring with the lower bound value the same thing any value beyond the maximum value cutoff value that we have considered as our um, uh, max and any value beyond that we would replace those values with our max value so i hope that is clear and this is called capping so flooring and capping this is one of the best practices and even if you go into the business uh, point of view it really makes sense because they have something called cutoff points so anything below or anything above you consider the max or the minimum and this is one of the best practices i would strongly recommend but again you can replace it with um, min max uh, sorry the averages and all those things but again it will not make sense if you really speak from the business uh, from the business point of view i'll explain to you in a minute Look at this particular case here now if i have shown you if i apply the same thing if i apply outlier concepts on age then see the, the thing is the 77 years of age is actually valid so if you start applying here then it will basically like you know it might give you wrong numbers that's what i'm trying to explain here so anyway the flooring and capping technique is what we are going to apply in this particular approach so how do you handle with the flooring and cap um, uh, flooring and capping technique i have written if uh, written a, written some code here actually let me explain to you i have written one um, one function as you can see here basically what i am trying to say is in the replace outliers we are basically first finding out what is our q1 value what is our q3 value what are q1 and q3 which is this basically like this one what is our q1 and q3 which is what is our q1 value the 25th percentile and what is our q3 value the 20, uh, 75th percentile so once you have identified that with the help of the data frame of that particular feature which i will be passing in i have got the input parameters of data frame and the feature so i want the 25th percentile value i want that 75th percentile value then i calculate the iqr which is simply q3 minus q1 once I know IQR, then I know which is this basically this IQR, then I'm going to calculate my what is my lower bound, what is my upper bound. In, in, in other words, what is my minimum value, what is my maximum value. So the easiest way you can do is this lower bound equals to Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR as I explained to you before. Upper bound is basically Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Now here it's also a good practice to just write the text just to know what were the values before you apply changes so i just uh, mentioned here what is, what was the feature that i passed in in this case i will be passing in weight what is what was the lower bound what was the upper bound so these values i'm just passing in now the way to do the capping technique is basically whatever the here i have just written some um, uh, some if condition like you know like uh, np uh, dot where at uh, that, that particular feature of the data frame if it is beyond more than upper bound then replace the value with upper bound the same thing if the value is less than lower bound replace with the value with lower bound in other words all these values will be replaced with the lower bound all these values beyond the max will be replaced with the upper bound that is basically what I have written and you could have written the same two lines in single line as well but I leave it to you you can write in any way um, I just explained here and it's uh, much easier to understand so that's basically what I am doing here as part of step 7 now once I run the step 7 so I have created this function called replace outlayers so that has been executed carefully um, successfully now i'm going to call my uh, replace outliers in other words i'm going to fix the outlier issues in that particular data frame for this particular weight because i know for sure that weight has extreme values so once i execute this one once i execute the same thing again basically like you know uh, replace that function parameters i execute i can see the text that i have written here so for the weight column the weight feature the lower bound is 28.62 kilos the upper bound is maximum it is accepting as 115 kilos so anyone above uh, 115 kilos 
uh, technically speaking they should have this value itself replaced right so let us verify that one so i'm going to rerun the code again which is part of my step eight uh, sorry step eight you know step seven so step seven again i'm calling the box plot i'm generating the box plot now again after fixing the um, um, outlays so once i run it you see here now you can see that there's a huge difference there is no more um, outlays uh, visible here now if you see this was our original data where we had some extreme outlayer values like 600 plus kilos as the patient's weight now after applying the outliers you can see that there is no more outliers now you may be wondering are these outliers the answer is no i will tell you why because i'm verifying here the data based on the complications that's why it is looking like this but if i show you again let me show you the um, let me first export these results in outliers fixed data dot csv i'm just exporting the data so once i have exported the data which i have explained to you uh, this one the last step step eight exporting um, the data let me open up that file uh, step number eight which is the outliers fixed data dot csv so outliers fixed data dot csv now let me zoom is this on uh, size and now if i convert this into a table well, now you see here i will show you the file before and after okay to make life easy so this was the file this was the data before applying outliers so again i will um, convert this data into x um, a table table let me increase the size you see here this is before applying the changes if you notice the weight of a person we know definitely there are some strange values patients who have kilos of 200 kilos 202 kilos 206 kilos 639 kilos so these things if you noticed and even the lowest value and the lowest value is 29 kilos that's fine so these values here these extreme values if you go and look at the newly created file you see here newly created file the lower bound is fine it's not, nothing happened not the, no changes but if you notice here the maximum all those uh, odd numbers 200 kilos to uh, 600 kilos so the outlier fix has made them as the maximum 115 kilos you see there so that's basically how you handle the outliers so this is one of the best practices to do it and um, this basically brings an end to this video and thank you for watching